Me and Elfie are going to show you how to make a cover for your cafetiere. Um, so what I've done, to stand the size of cafetiere, and I've measured a piece of fabric which um, will go from the top to the bottom, basically, and then a little bit extra, because I've got a seam allowance of around about um, two centimetres. And it just meets just inside the handle, and that's where I'm going to tie it with a couple of ribbons. So the first thing I need to do is put all the pieces together and attach the ribbons before I actually start sewing. So I've got two pieces of the fabric because I'm going to make it reversible. So I've got a spot, Clark and Clark, and I've got a Ditsy flower. Both of those cut to the same size. Then I've got a piece of wadding, just natural thin wadding, which is cut around about a, um, a centimetre smaller all the way around. And I'm going to stick that in place with um, some stick and spray for fabric. If you're going to use a fabric glue, make sure that it's a glue that is specifically designed for fabric so that you can sew through it. And this isn't a permanent spray, it's um, a crafter's companion one and it's just one that you can, you can use like tacking basically. Um, but you can pin if you don't have any glue spray. And I'm going to place that in the centre face down onto the reverse of one of the panels. The next thing to do is to attach the ribbons. So they need to face inwards, but from the outside of the fabric. So they get um, attached into the seam. So I'm going to put one here. So that should sit just inside the handle. Not over the line where I'm going to stitch because I don't want to sew through the pins. Oh, gone. And one there. And then make sure on the other side that they're symmetrical so that the ties meet up. See you, Alfie. And so there. you can measure this and be really precise. I probably should have done that, but that looks about right to me. Pin. Again, keeping the ribbon away from the, the edge. Uh, sorry, keeping the pin away from the edge so I don't sew through it. Keeping the ribbon right up to the edge. And pin. I want to keep my ribbon inside here because I don't want to sew over it. Then I'll put the back of the, the coffee cosy on top and pin again just to keep this in place while I stitch. And I'm not going to glue this because I'll need to turn it inside out. And just using a straight stitch, I'm going to sew most of the way around the edge, but I will need to turn this. And I'm going to sew just inside um, the wadding. So back tack first of all, because it makes, makes it easier to turn without the stitches coming undone. Into the corner. And then back part way along here, leaving a gap, remember, for turning. So before I turn, I'll need to take all of my pins out. And I also want to cut across the corners so I don't get too much bulky fabric in the corners while I'm turning. Careful not to cut through the stitches but you can always stitch over again, slightly inside the stitch line. You do cut through them. Now be careful when you're turning because there's still pins on the inside from where I attach the ribbon. I don't want to spike myself and 
making sure that that wadding is right into the corner. Push that out, I can take the pins out as I go because the ribbon should be attached now. It's easy to push all the corners through first just to make sure you get them. attached in place through the seams so that gives it a, a nice professional finish and it also means that I can use this either way so I can use it on the flowery side or on the spotty side but I just need to finish off the hole in the opening and I'm going to do that by top stitching all the way around now you can sew that by hand if you wanted to but I haven't got the patience at the moment so I'm going to stitch straight over the top just using again a straight stitch a little bit narrower than before starting in the corner and I'm going to take it slowly because you'll see this stitching but you can always undo if it goes wrong just want to make sure that that hole is closed over so I don't have to sew it again and I'm going to sew quite close to the edge so that's closing up the opening where I turned you could use a decorative stitch here or a contrast colour would have been nice I could have used pink to match with the flowers or something not too sharp and make the corners a little bit sharper but I'm actually going to keep mine a little bit rounder. So make it accurate. So keeping as close to the edge as I can because I think that looks really fine, really professional. And it gives it a nice finishing touch but it also keeps um, the wadding and the stitching in place. out of the way, I don't want to sew those back on themselves. Right into that corner. And then just back tack to stop the stitches coming undone. And it's finished. Um, probably needs pressing at this point. There we go. But that's nice and padded. So not only does it make your cafetiere look pretty, it's also practical because it helps to keep the coffee warm. So I'm just going to tie that in a couple of bows. So if you've got some um, rip rack, you could have put that around the edge or decorated with um, flower, ribbon flowers would have been nice, or a little bit of applique. So how much time you've got and how fancy you want it to be. So again, just a couple of bows at the back there. And twist that around. And there's my cafetier cover. And uh, a much simpler way, or a smaller way, of copying the same is to make some little covers to match for your mugs as well. Cheers.